Hey guys, what's going on? It's your host, your boy, George McKay, back here on the MLW Rewind. And as you all know, I never do it alone. I always do this with my PIC, the one and only my Uncle Bobby B. What's happening? What what's is going on? Going on? Yeah. Ain't nothing going on but the rent. That's true. That's true. Well, everyone out there in YouTube land, welcome. Everyone else listening on all available podcast platforms, welcome. And anyone listening exclusively on... That's Sunday night's mean. main event. Saturday night's main event. Welcome. Uh, today's episode, we are officially two weeks away, actually a week and like three days now, away from MLW's first pay-per-view. That's right. Never say never. Available on Fight Plus for $7.99. $7.99 subscription service for a month. You get that plus a whole plethora of other great content. I mean, you can't beat the price point on that. And they also announced a few additions to the card. We were concerned because we'd only had four matches up till now, but now we have six. We have six matches signed, sealed, and delivered after tonight's episode, and this card is shaping up to be absolutely fantastic. Kicks off with a recap of Mance Warner, Sam Adonis, and their feud. Leading up to the strap match that we're going to get later on tonight, uh, we also get featherweight action to kick off the show. Clara Carreras versus the newest member of the calling, the very dangerous, the very dark-looking Mandy Leon. We've seen Mandy Leon before. <clears throat> Not like this. Um, Not like this. Yeah, and my only complaint, and, and you know, it's funny, we were talking a couple weeks ago saying, like, the calling could use a female member, right, to be able to attack on all fronts, and there it is. Uh, it, it just no fanfare or build-up. It was just like, oh, Mandy Leon's coming out, and she's a member of the calling now. Well, we did get that rather strange vignette where we really couldn't make out who it was when the That's eyes true. Opened. So we That's did true. get that, but now to see the whole picture, uh, very dark, very goth looking, if you will, uh, came out all business, came out with Raven, and uh, I'll give Clara credit, Clara Carreras, she also making her MLW debut, uh, she would have a pretty good fight, she got her spots she in, she definitely had uh, a couple good moments, but uh, Mandy, she looked, she looked solid, uh, she looked hungry, she looked ready. And uh, I did like at the end where she hit the Astro Protection, which is her finisher. Uh, she pulled Claire up and said, no, 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 no. She got her in that headlock and said, quote, the Raven and hit the trademark Raven DDT. And it was beautiful for the one, two, three. And it's over. Mandy Leon wins and impresses. But uh, Claire Carrera, shout out to you. Uh, you impressed as well. So I hope to see you back because I think uh, I think the featherweight division could use some of you as well. So uh I enjoyed seeing you work, and I enjoyed Mandy's uh, debut uh, as the newest member of the calling. Uh, all in all, Rob, what did you think about this kickoff match? Uh, yeah, it was. It, I, I actually, I actually, actually expected it to be more of a squash, and but I liked that it wasn't. Yeah, they went for about like four or five minutes, but like Clara got some offense in, and it made it a little more. Like not everything can be a squash. Like when it's a you know, a new person debuting and they, they like to give them a squash match to just kind of build them up. But no, I like this. It didn't make Bandy Leon look bad, but it definitely made Clara Carreras look good. And that's what we're all here to do at the end of the day is get each other over. So everyone got over here and, and I thought it was a good, decent start to the episode. Absolutely. Well, you know what? You know what didn't get over? The fact that Mance Warner and Matt Justice had been drinking outside all day and they ran out of beer. This is a very serious problem in the uh in the second gear crew's uh you know livelihood beer is like water for them and if they run out it's dangerous territory and they're nervous they're waiting for manders manders has got some gift that he wants to give mance and he, mance is hoping it's a 12 pack well actually maybe he's hoping it's a two four but it was not manders shows up with a strap that's right manders gives mance the strap they'll be used in the strap match and this strap looked good he picked it up from his grandpappy in iowa and it was very, you know, that's why he took so long. He got caught up on the highway. <laughs> but he's there. He made it. And uh, you know what? They're also greeted by the SST. That's right. Lance and Juicy show up with beer. They actually saved the day more so than Manders did. They show up with beer. Everybody's happy. And they say to Mance, you know what? We appreciate you, man, for what you did last week, helping helping Jacob out there, getting rid of Sam, kind of making, uh, you know, a little bit of an equal fair fight. We'll do anything for you. And Mance's ears perk up. He says anything. <laughs> Well, I'm looking Anything. at tag team. I'm looking at you two rocking tag team gold. How about you put your titles on the line against the SGC? SGC versus SST? Sounds like money, quote unquote, from Lance. And they accept. So we're going to get that next week. The SGC taking on the SST. 
Whew, that is a mouthful. I had to really practice that one a few times. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Rob, what do you think about this? Leading into Never Say Never, do you think that the calling may be taking on the second gear crew if they can dethrone SST leading into Never Say Never? It's certainly a possibility. Uh, I was I was kind of, I, I liked this whole interaction because, you know, uh, often in, in pro wrestling, like it's naturally, it's, there's animosity. Like you're you're trying to take what's mine. You're trying to beat me. You're trying to physically hurt me. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. this was just more of a like, hey, you know, we did you a favor. How about you do us a favor? Let's go out and have, their, have a match with these guys. And everyone was kind of like, all right, let's go. Let's do it. So it's different than what we're used to seeing in wrestling. So I liked that it was a whole positive interaction overall. Nobody came off looking like a heel. Uh and uh, I'm stoked. It, it could be a, we could be seeing a switch up for the title match. Absolutely. Absolutely. So in case anybody's wondering what we're talking about at never say never, it is a great fans bring the weapons match between the calling and the current champs, the SST, but that might change after next Thursday, which is the last fusion right before we get into never say never. And it's going to be a big one. We definitely know there's at least going to be another match, possibly maybe two that may be announced for this pay-per-view. We're up to six right now. Uh, and uh, you know, after that promo, we also get word that Alex Hammerstone, that's right, he's in the arena, maybe possibly to be there to watch the Big Apple grapple too. I mean, Alex K did say he would like Hammer to be front row to see what was going to happen to him at Never Say Never. So it'll be interesting to see if Hammer shows up later on in the night. Uh, we also get Microman and Willie Mack. They're chilling on a bench. They're drinking Dunkin' Donuts coffee. <laughs> they are eating the Munchkins, a.k.a. which is a blatant ripoff of Tim Horton's Timbits. But they're eating the Munchkins. And they're loving life. And St. Laurent's coming up the side. He's making deals, and he is pissed. He sees Microman supposed to be on a diet watching his weight. He says, don't trust Willie Mack. Don't trust this man. We we know from his own promo what Willie Mack's dietary uh, uh, <laughs> sets are, as he previously told us a few weeks ago. So, uh, yeah, I mean, St. Laurent's not wrong on that, but he tells Microman Dunkin' Donuts should be paying him money. And if any money is lost, it comes out of Microman shares. This is becoming concerning for me. Because St. Laurent keeps mentioning money. He keeps yeah. mentioning the almighty dollar. And I'm not sure where it's going. I mean, it's definitely going to end with St. Laurent probably getting his ass kicked. But I, it's concerning for me because I feel like Microman is getting swindled. I mean, I think we all feel that that's where it's happening. But, Rob, what did you think about uh, the Dunkin' Donuts promo and the fact that, I mean, was St. Laurent <laughs> right? Should Microman be trusting, trusting sorry, Willie Mack when it comes to dietary restrictions? I, I mean... Now that St. Laurent has uh, given us opportunities within his Toronto office, I don't really want to talk too badly about the fair man. Enough, fair enough, right? But uh, yeah, it, it, it seems as though Microman really just uh, not watching his diet and and not thinking about the financial impact of things. And Mr. St. Laurent had to step in and set him straight. You know, that's understandable. Uh, side note, Johnny, uh, Johnny Fusion, Johnny... Mundo, Johnny Caballero, whatever you want to call him. When he wrestles here, he's actually known as Johnny Timbit. Just a call back to the if you're listening from the States, you don't know what Timbits are. They're they're munchkins. It's the same thing. It's it's just what we call we them here first, from we first. Yeah. Yeah, we have you know, we have Tim Hortons. You guys have them down there too, but I don't think it's as popular as Duncan. Right. Right. Anyways. But Timbits, we had them first. Plain and simple. We had them first. We had them first. We did. They're just essentially donut holes. That's exactly what they are. They're the yeah. dough that comes out of the donut hole. Gets but they're tasty. The ball. Yeah, they're they're absolutely tasty. They got a couple different flavors. They're good. Uh, Tim bits aside, it's strap match time. That's right. Uh, this match was great. It was a lot of fun for me. It was entertaining. They kicked it old school by doing the four corners because sometimes in strap match, it's not really the four corners. It's just about incapacitating your opponent. Some of the rules do change, but they went classic with it. They did the, you got to touch all four corners. And, uh, you know, Sam Adonis, he always impresses me. I mean, his mic skills, I've seen him work live. This guy is incredible. And for a man that's about six foot four, uh, showing what he could do with his agility by doing a, a sexy little tightrope walk into a swinging neck breaker from the top rope was damn impressive. And um, Mance Warner, you know, he got hardcore. He does what he does best. Uh, they both took different paths to get to the four corners. And uh, Mance's was at the far left corner. And Sam's was at the close right corner. And Mance was foolish enough to set up the door that he would eventually spear Sam Adonis through. And as Sam was getting speared, he touched that last turnbuckle and Sam Adonis scores the win via controversial fashion, if you will. But he did follow the rules and he did get one up on old Manser. 
and Mance was not happy. Uh, that's for sure. We'll get to his promo. Uh, well, actually, right now, his promo is uh, he's unhappy. You know, Sam got one over on him. <laughs> He was not happy. Let's get to that promo. And uh, he's not happy. happy. <laughs> Sam, listen, Sam pulled, great. According to Mance Warner, Sam pulled one over on him. Sam pulled the wool over his eyes. Not really the case. You set the door up in the wrong turnbuckle. There's only one person to blame. Sorry, Mance, that's yours. But you know what he says? He says, how about this? July 8th. We get a bunch of people around the ring. We give them leather whips, straps, whatever you want to call. And if you roll out, they're going to whip you. Throw you back in. This is going to be a country whipping match, a.k.a. it's pretty much a lumberjack match, but everyone has whips. That's exactly what this is. But that's going to go down on July 8th, so that's another addition to the Never Say Never match card. And also, how about this? Jacob Fatou, first title defense is a new openweight champ. He's going one-on-one heavyweight hustle Calvin Tankman. That match has the ability every match in this card that they've announced so far has the ability to be a show stealer and this one is no different these two are going to take it to the limit we've seen what they can do when calvin take it to the limit Limit. Limit. (laughs) he did uh we we do know what these two can do in the ring because he did have a title shot at jacob too when he was the champ during his contra days yeah that was a banger of a match i believe that's one of the few matches the first couple times you joined MLW was one of those matches that we talked about. So I really did enjoy it. Maybe it it definitely did. So those are two additions to that. I also forgot to mention because it wasn't really a great promo. It was very inaudible, but Jacob, too, was celebrating his win on the rooftop of the arena in New York. And uh, he was joined by the SST and they are all strapped up. They are in gold. They are bulletproof. And the calling better be watching because the SST is ready and they got all the gold now uh jacob Fatu promo aside rob what did you think of the strap match what did you think of mance warner's promo what do you think of the country uh country whooping match what do you think about everything uh i'm glad this is not the end of sam and mance i enjoy this program that they're working uh match was pretty good and it was a it was a smart finish uh and and great just great commentary work on this match as well uh yeah. Matt and Joe were just just all over the place in in a good way. Uh, yeah, it was a solid match. I'm 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 interested to see where the payoff is going with this and how it's all worked in with the factions and and all that stuff. Uh, so should be should be interesting. And Matt say you can't go wrong with a Matt's Warner promo. Dude is dude just pretty much is himself. So it's it's not hard for him to just throw these things on the fly. Absolutely. And now. We get to what happened before the promo, and I lost myself in my notes, so I apologize. (laughs) The expose of Boumaye. That's right. Joe Dabrowski does a deep dive and try to figure out who is the bankroller for Boumaye. Right now, we have three possible suspects in part one of this two-part expose. The second part will air next (laughs) week. Part one of the expose says it could be Dan Lambert. Even though him and Alex Kane had a falling out, Dan Lambert likes to bankroll winners, and Alex Kane is exactly that. But what about Shane Taylor? That's right, the head of Shane Taylor Promotions. We have seen some members of Shane Taylor Promotions accompanying Alex Kane and Boumaye to the ring. Shane Taylor's made a legacy for himself. Five-year run in ROH, and he's racked up titles all over the world. He's also a former guest of Straight Talk Wrestling twice. Check out the archives for that. And um, could be Rap Mogul Wale. He's got ties to MLW. Why couldn't he be the man who bankrolls? I did not know who that was, so I was kind of embarrassed. I was like, who? Wale is a a rap mogul, and in 2019, when uh, MLW kind of got its resurgence, or its restart, if you will, uh, he was kind of there for the early days of it. Uh, Okay, so that makes makes sense. He was kind of the hype man for it, yeah. Uh, uh, And Joe Dombrowski, though, confirms that it is none of these three (laughs) men. That's right, it is none. We've listed the suspects, and none of these three men are the man behind Boom IA. So next week, we'll get a couple more additional suspects, which probably will not be the bankrollers of Boom IA, the way these exposés are going. And we won't find out who is the bankroller of Boom IA until never say never. Now we get Sam Letourneau. She's joined by the new featherweight champion, Dummy Exo, on the stage to talk about how she's going to elevate the featherweight division, being the second woman to hold that title. But before Delmi could even answer the question, she's attacked by former champ Taya Valkyrie in pretty disturbing fashion. That's right. Taya lays the title down center of the stage. 
and she curb stomps Delmi right into the title pretty viciously. At that point, security and EMTs rush out. Security kind of rushes Taya off the stage. EMTs are attending to Delmi as she stretched out. And Taya's last words were from the cameraman, why are you doing this? Taya turns around and says, I would do this every day. She pisses me off so much. So much. And guess what, Core Power? You love contracts. You love your, your pen. You love your contracts. Well, great. How about this? She's got 30 days to defend that title against me. And she says, good luck with that. And that broken jaw, bitch. Quote, unquote. Now, this gets implications for Never Say Never in a pretty interesting fashion because right now it's supposed to be a title versus title match between Ava Everett and Dummy XO is the MLW Featherweight Championship is on the line versus the WXW Women's Championship on the line. And Ava said that in her promo, that she wants that title. She wants to be Ava Undisputed. That's what she wants. Good and promo from Ava. It was well. a great promo from Ava. It was fantastic. Um, so this now has implications, right? Because if Delmi cannot defend against Ava, does she relinquish the title? Does Ava get the title? Do they do a tournament? Does Taya get the title back by default? Mm. There's multiple angles that they could do this, but this is concerning. And I do wish Delmi Exo a very speedy recovery because that sucks to finally get Taya, to beat Taya, and then to be assaulted by Taya. It's yeah. not a real great way to start this title reign, not even having a chance to defend it yet. Rob, your I, thoughts on everything that transpired? I was just kind of surprised because I thought, you know, with Taya having signed elsewhere, that that would be the last we would be seeing of her, but apparently not. I guess we're getting a, a, a Taya rematch with Delmi Exo. Uh, like you said, implications for the title if she's injured. Like, did, did she actually break her jaw? She can be wearing like a mask. Is the, 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 where are we going with this? Uh, I'm, I'm I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued because I feel like uh, with that big debut tonight, Mandy Leon is probably going to be coming after Delmi Exo, but she clearly got unfinished business with Taya. So let's let's draw this out a little longer. See what happens. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know what? Um, uh, what about the thoughts on the expose? I mean, did you like and the expose? Was fun. I I I kind of had a couple chuckles with it, especially when they like gave you all this stuff and then they're like and it's none of these people and yeah, I was like, yeah. I was like, like well, what the hell i just watch it for yeah, yeah. <laughs> well they did they did it very well actually i will say dare day i say that expose was better than the one alicia did on uh caesar durant the one she did on caesar durant was good but this expose was a little bit more hard-hitting from mr cool. joe dombrowski and, and what i liked about it was it was like those were all actually feasible individuals to be kind of bankrolling the thing uh, and then just to to be like, no, nah, it's, it's, it's not, it's not, it's none of them, it's none of them. So Fuck now you're yeah. like, oh shit, I thought I had a good idea, because like, come on, you can't tell me when they started each one that popped up, you were like, oh yeah, that makes sense, and and then no, well, it's except not. for except for you with Wale, you had no idea. Yeah, Wale, yeah, because I didn't know who that was, <laughs> but even still, I was like, well, that would still make sense because it's just somebody I don't know. That doesn't mean they're not relevant. Like, they're clearly more relevant than I am. Sure factual it's absolutely factual all right big apple grapple time that's right part two is now alex kane comes out and he's looking for a hoe that's right he wants any hoe in the locker room to challenge him for his big old bag of money and we get a challenger and i'm gonna need rob to help me with the name oh shihigiro irie there you go Irie comes out to answer the challenge, and it was a great match. Irie had a couple moments there where I thought he might pull it out, but it was fun. Ever the true professional, Alex Kane hits the mark of Kane. He scores the win. He walks away with the bag of money. Boumaye is still very much intact, and Alex Kane grabs a mic and says, "Guess what? That was a warm up. <laughs> Why don't we get to the real work? And the real work." is Hammerstone. Bring that ass. Hammerstone comes out and says, listen, Kane, you're talking about all this work. The only work I want you to get is dental work. That was pretty savage. That was pretty savage. But Alex Kane also hit him back by saying, okay, Hulk Hogan, okay, old-time warrior, bring it on. And Hammer looked genuinely pissed. They were firing some shots but Hammer was quickly ushered off stage by only two referees. 
and the sound guy, Alex. That's right. Alex, the sound guy, stepped in between the two, and he defused the situation because they are not going to give up this title match on a fusion. No, no. This is happening at Never Say Never. And as quickly as the situation got heated, it was calmed down by Alex, the sound guy, who's the MVP of tonight's episode. <laughs> Alex, way to go, my man. You did it. But the fact is, Never Say Never is a week and a half away. And man, oh man, is it shaping up to be a good card with the additions of the matches they made. This was a fantastic fusion. This episode was short, sweet, and simple. But Rob, what did you think about the Big Apple Grapple Part 2? What did you think about Hammer's viciousness on Kane and Kane's viciousness back on Hammer? The war words is strong. And if the war words is strong with these two guys, imagine what's going to happen when they get their hands on each other. You know, it was kind of weird. Like, I was watching that match, and I was going, like, it's not like I was jumping off my seat or anything like that. But when the match was done, I was like, that was a that was a good fucking match. Like, just overall, I enjoyed it. Uh, very physical. Alex Kane, great facial selling. Uh, hit that mark of Kane. Looked great. Enjoyable match. Nice to see Irie back. Uh, clearly, this partnership with WXW is expanding because they're doing more and more Talent That's right. Tree, he which... won the sixty. He won the sixty k gold tournament. Sixty. Gold I think. Uh, tournament, yeah. Something like I think that. our our uh, our friend Von Vertigo did some work over there when he went on a recent excursion. Yeah, he did. Von Vertigo has been over there as well. Uh, but uh, the, the every partnership that MLW has, the partnership with Dragon Gate was fantastic. Uh, the partnership with uh, All Japan was fantastic, and now the partnership with WXW. I like it. I like all the moves that they've Dig made. It. And uh, Iria really looked great in this match. And he's been in MLW before. He's not a stranger yeah. in MLW. He's been there before as a one half of the Strong Hearts back in the day. But, uh, and thank you for helping me out with the name because we know I struggle with the uh, four names. But all in all, this match was a lot of fun. Like you said, hard hitting. And Iria got his spots in, man. He definitely made Kane look like he might lose for the first time in a while. And uh, yeah, I will say that uh, I'm very excited for Never Say Never. Uh, a pot, like we saw some potential uh, cracks in the foundation of Alex Kane. He's He's not invincible right like right. hammer's got to capitalize on those opportunities absolutely i could not agree more so all in all you rate this fusion a uh thumbs up yeah definitely a thumbs up wasn't a bad one that's for sure no absolutely was i i, I much like last week where i said i didn't have anything to complain about that i found reasons to complain <laughs> this one i didn't have anything to complain about other than the inaudible uh, semi inaudible promo from jacob Fatu and the sst Everything else was great. Everything else was fantastic. And I enjoyed it all from the wrestling to the promos to the story building that they're doing. And they are building it in the best way possible, leading in a never say never. And at that point, we're going to call it quits on this. Rewind. We're done. It's in the can. We're, we're, we have rewind it as far as we can go. And we can't rewind it anymore. So uh, as I stutter, I'll let Uncle Bobby V say his goodbyes. And I'll say my goodbyes. And then we'll be out of here until next week for the final fusion before never say never. Bobby? Well, thank you for joining us joining us this week, no matter where you're watching from. We appreciate watching, listening, whatever you're doing. No matter how you were consuming us, mm. we appreciate you. You can find me on uh, Instagram at the real Uncle Bobby B, and that's the only place you're going to find me. Uh, besides in person, you can catch me at uh, your local wrestling show or catch my band, The Dominion, in your town if you live close. Well, don't consume us physically. <laughs> I don't. I don't know where he was going with that. That concerned me a little they bit. Consume our content that we consume create. The, there you go. That, well, there, there you go. Consume the content. This is not a episode of Yellow Jackets. There will be no eating. Anyways, peace, love, and rest, of the guys. All my socials are in the links below. Have a sweet one. We'll see you next week. Peace. Adios. <laughs> <laughs>